from before recorded time, the Wadawurrung people of the Kulin Nation cared for this land. We praise the Creator for the beauty of this land and honour those who have cared for it. We acknowledge the elders and community members who have told the sacred stories and nurtured faithfulness to the Creator. We ask God's blessing on those who continue to work for the healing and restoration of this land and her communities. Greetings, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton. Welcome to this online service. Yes, here we are again, impacted by the consequences of the pandemic. But please watch out for updates uh, as restrictions ease. Our theme in, the vi in this video will centre around the care of God's creation prompted by the marking on June the 5th of, Un of the United Nations World Environment Day. But more of that in a moment. First of all, how are you doing? Four simple words. How are you doing? Four simple words that form a question that can mean so much if they are asked with genuine care and love. Four simple words that can allow someone to really share what's happening for them, whether good or bad. Why not ask someone today, how are you doing? Perhaps give them a call and be ready to listen and listen hard if a response comes because it could be that that person isn't doing too well at all. By the way, if you want to get in touch with us, please use the contact details that are on the congregation's website. That's uh, stlukesuca.org.au and you'll find details too there of the plans for worship in person as the restrictions ease. Come share with us now in a time of prayer. The verbal elements of this prayer, because it will include some time for silence, will include a modern collect written by Melbourne author Julie Perrin from her book, A Prayer, A Plea, A Bird. So let's pause for a few moments in silence and open ourselves to the reality that God is present with us now, offering us life in all its fullness. compassionate God, who is closer to us than we can ever imagine. We praise you that your spirit at the beginning hovered over the waters of chaos and brought life. And that the same spirit breathes life into thirsty hearts and souls right now. As we ponder the beauty of your world, cragged mountain peaks, sapphire seas, immense forest gums, the intricate patterning of butterflies' wings. We are led to a song for how blessed are we. Empowered by your spirit, you call us to reflect the love of Christ by loving you, our neighbour, ourselves, and you call us to care for your world. When we've failed to live up to this calling, forgive us and redirect us. Enable us to be open to your healing and renewal. Show us how we can bring about change in our lives. Forest sculptor, carving surprise in shape and texture, soothe our parched and fractured hearts. Bathe us in green gifts of leafy wonder. Call the child within to rest on beds of moss. Let us bask under wavering delicacy of fern, protected by ancient eucalypt. May we sleep again sated in the canopied green, enfolded in forests beloved. We offer these and all our prayers in the name of Christ. Amen.
The Bible reading comes from Genesis 1, verses 1 to 28. Genesis 1 is the wonderful hymn that begins the Bible and celebrates the creative power of God. Note that words like dominion and subdue regarding humanity's relationship with creation are all about responsibility, stewardship and care. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made and he, indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Genesis chapter 1 is such a fantastic passage. Um, I'm sorry we only were able to hear a portion of it, but I, I guess you heard the rhythm and the power and the beauty of the words as um, they were read for us by uh, Claire and Ian. Why not commit some time to reading it slowly and reflecting upon it for yourself? There's so much to digest. But surely the key message from this text is that the cosmos is a gift of God. 
that the Spirit of God enlivens all things, that God is the Creator God. And a second word to us from this text is that we humans have a particular place in creation, and that is to care for it, that we have a responsibility to be good stewards so generations can enjoy the blessings of this wonderful planet and universe. And as Christians, surely we should take that word to us very, very seriously, that role of being stewards. The United Nations website for World Environment Day speaks about restoration. And I think that kind of resonates for us as Christians with plenty of biblical concepts such as healing, renewal, new beginnings that kind of connect with restoration. The UN website includes this statement which I found helpful. We cannot turn back time, but we can grow trees, green our cities, rewild our gardens, change our diets and clean up rivers and coasts. Some of you will know that we spent uh, nine years, that is my family and myself, in ministry based at Bensdale. Actually the region of the Bensdale Parish is bigger than the area of metropolitan Melbourne, so a huge area. And one of the congregations of the parish was located in a place called Fernbank a small hamlet about halfway between Bairnsdale and Stratford, but some distance off the main road. The area around Fernbank, before the coming of us white folk, had been heavily forested, and the first Anglo visitors, visitors described it as being like a huge parkland. Perhaps this was because of uh, the regular cool burns carried out by generations of First Peoples. One document on the internet which you can look up describes the area as having been grassy woodland. Now when I was a minister in the area, and it was in the 1980s and early 1990s, there were only patches of trees. There were certainly no huge parklands. There were only remnants of the grassy woodlands. The locals explained to me that the area had been heavily logged. Indeed there had once been a sawmill at Fernbank which is naturally near the main rail line, and so of course had had direct access to the whole of Gippsland and Melbourne. And while I cannot confirm this, I was told by the locals that many of the red gum trees ended up being cut into blocks and shipped up to marvellous Melbourne in the 19th century, no doubt on the train, to be used as pavers on the streets. The last time I drove that way, I noticed things were changing, that there were many more trees in the area, especially along creek beds and in gullies. This it turns out was a result of a local land care group which has been very active in recent years. Local farmers, some of whom were associated with the church, had engaged in some practical restoration and renewal of the land. Now, of course, you don't have to belong to the Fernbank Area Landcare Group to plant trees. This congregation's environment group has shared in tree planting days and is always looking for volunteers. We can all take practical and significant steps to care for this environment, this world with which we're blessed, to be good stewards for future generations of this wonderful world which, is, which God has blessed us with. We can all share in Acts of Restoration. Let's continue in prayer now. Two prayers. One comes from England and is written by the Reverend Kate Williams. The second is a shortened version of a prayer by the Reverend James Bagwan, who is the General Secretary from the Pacific Conference of Churches. that as your handiwork we stand alongside all that you have made trees and rivers mountains and valleys soaring birds and scuttling creatures are all held within your care 
May we grow in our love and appreciation for the fabulous variety around us and may our awe and wonder draw us closer to the natural world and through it to you, the God of all things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Loving God and embracing God. Through your Son, Jesus, you renew all things and offer abundant life. In these challenging times, we have been reminded that your grace has been sufficient for us. You challenge us to look beyond our own difficulties to those whose needs are greater than ours, whose cries for justice are louder than ours. Creator God, all of creation is groaning. You remind us that a renewal is required to address the loneliness of spirit that the world feels. The hunger of the human heart that material gain cannot satisfy. Amidst the pain and suffering of so many, you offer hope of a renewed world a reweaving of the divine mat on which all creation sits together, each a sacred strand of your design that was very good. Help us, O Lord, journey into a profound, a deeper relationship with both you as creator and all your creation. To touch the soil and tend to the earth to protect the ocean and move gently with it, to sing a new Lord's song and work together so that everything that has breath, the trees and the seas that make oxygen and the creatures that breathe it to live, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Along with these prayers, written by people from two sides of the world, we lay before you, O oh Lord, our own particular needs and the needs of others whose concerns weigh on our hearts. Pray particularly for those who are grieving, those who are ill, those who are lonely, those who are feeling isolated, those who just need a sense of touch. And we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Yeriti Anunko, Yegeste Arkaitunko, Yeritin Gamko, Vorbes Herginis Hergri, Zhats Mer Hana Bazort, Durmes Isor, Tormes Bardis Mer, Vorbes Yev Meg Tormunk Merot, Bardavanats, Yev Midan Irismes, Iportsutun, I Pergia, Icharen, Zikoe, Arkaitun, Yev Zorutun, Yev Park Havidian. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Would we truly let you die? Or can we swim 
to the other side Dream ourselves into an ancient place To another river long ago Oh